God. It's not real. But he got so much power that he controls the destiny of everybody in that world and below that world. Hello, everybody. My name is Professor Brinson. When I was in Rush Hospital going to get a colonoscopy, my wife insisted that I get one. And we got into an argument. When I was going upstairs in a wheelchair to see the colonoscopist, the doctor who was supposed to clean out my system, I got into an argument with my wife. First, I got out of the body and I watched the doctors. My wife was in panic because she kept talking to me and she didn't realize I was gone. I died without pain and I met my teacher. <laughs> my teacher who had taught me how to do this, he was there. But when you get out of the body, you actually can go. You think of a place and you instantaneously there, you travel faster than the speed of light. That's what I discovered. So as we were going through the entire physical universe, I wanted to see the sun. He said, why do you want to see this boring sun? There's nothing but nuclear weapons and huge energy and power exploding. So I said, let's stop. We stopped. I didn't feel any heat, but it was huge. A lot of nuclear explosion going on. And he said, let's get out of this boring place. So as we go further, he said, just look at me and follow me and I'll be your chaperone. So as we went through the physical universe with trillions and trillions of stars and planets and all kinds of species, we just went through that universe in a fraction of a second. And I ended up in a tunnel. And as I started going through the tunnel, I met people that I had known in the 1700s. <laughs> I met people that I had known in the 1600s and even in 500 AD and I went further back. So as I went into the, through the tunnel, I went into the astral world. That world is a beautiful place. It's a copy of this physical world. Everything that you see in this physical world is there, but in a more perfect expression. This world is like an imperfect holographic expression of that world. Everybody in that world is extremely gorgeous. If you look at the cartoons or the newspaper, you may see a president where they make his nose look funny, but you can recognize the character. We are characters. We don't look as beautiful as we do there. We're extremely gorgeous. Everybody's handsome there. There's no pain. Everybody is more wise and more knowledgeable there. In this world, you have to go and read books. You have to listen to people and you get the impression that they're giving you knowledge. All they're doing is getting you, giving you the capacity to concentrate your attention. And we give the teachers the credit. They just inspire you to concentrate. But in that world, you just look at something and knowledge is like poured into you. You look at a tree. The tree is much gorgeous than the trees here. And you can see how old that tree, just by looking at it, you're going to see what's happened to it in a few hundred years there, compared with the time here. You can see a human being and see, to some extent, the future of that human being. You definitely can see the past. Times become a vehicle that you can travel upon. You can just get on time and go back and see how everything looked thousand years ago, depending upon your concentrational skills that you have there. You can see one, two, three, a hundred lifetimes if you wish. You only can do it in this world if you go see a hypnotist and they can tap into your consciousness. 95% 95 of the people are hypnotizable. They can take you back into time. But you can't remember too much when you come back into this state. You have to have him recorded on a, uh, a video so you can see yourself and you change you change bodies, you change racial comp comp composition. All of this stuff has changed. But anyway, going back to the astral world, if you were to take the astral world with all of the heavens and hell, the physical universe with all of its trillions of stars and planets and galaxies would be as small as a quarter thrown into the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean would represent the astral plane. There are beings there. They all are intelligent. Some of them are working just like they do in this world. They're working on different projects. Some of them are uh, working on medicine, trying to come up with new viruses, trying to come up with new modern techniques of healing the body. 
coming up with uh, new machineries, like how to come up with a better computer. Some are working on energy, new forms of energy. Like if you go back into the 1700s, there were no airplanes, right? Where did they come from? At least one or two human beings who concentrated his or her attention and came up with gadgets that led to the airplane. Telephones came up the same way. You know, people concentrated their attention. Automobiles, architectural structures start changing from the primitive to the modern. But if you want to build a house in the astral world, you just think it can come into the sky because there's no gravity there. People are living in houses there, beautiful mansions. Some people who don't want to create houses, they go see a person who's a great designer and they can think of a house and you can get a house there that's in the sky or you can put it on the ground. Everything is done with uh, thoughts. Thoughts become a means of creating, a means of communicating, and a means of transportation. In order to move in this world, you have to think. Let me go see a, a, a travel agent, right? You pay a few dollars. If you want to get on a plane, if you want to go somewhere, it depends on how much money you got. Your attention becomes the money in the astral plane. You can travel as much as far as you can go with your concentration of attention there. And people think, tend to think when you get there, that's the highest level of consciousness. I'm here to say it's not the highest level. It's the elementary school of the spiritual world. But all of the levels of consciousness are structured in such a way that you feel it's the highest. Even at this level, you feel it's the highest. Nobody really wants to die. Even if you talk about high levels and I'm giving you conversation, but you don't want to die unless you know how to go there at will. But if you have an experience that loosens your feeling of wanting to stay in this world, you know something exists for real, but you may not go high enough where your memory comes back that you were there for three or 4,000 years of age. <laughs> if you get that memory, then you don't want to come back here. You said, let me continue because you can go meet athletes that are working on their football skills, their gymnastic skills, their baseball skills. So when they reincarnate, they become great bas basketball players or football players. That's how the process works. All of the knowledge is coming from a higher level of consciousness percolating through the concentration of different human beings on earth. Since you go to that world, you feel it's the highest. Everybody that you talk to, uh, Vivian, you will discover those who've had clinical death experiences, they only talk about the astral world. <clears throat> I had a rare experience because I read, met someone who had gone way beyond the astral world. He said, let's go beyond this place. So he escorted me with the sound that turned into music. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that that world is full of music. I don't know if you've seen the movie Sound of Music where this lady is singing and she said the hills are full of music the hills are actually full of music there everything has a musical expression your body has a musical expression your body is full of light everything is full of light in this world you need the sun or you need some kind of electricity to create light otherwise you can't see them in that world everything is lit up in that world is a more perfect expression of this world all of the comma is in that world and each one of these levels of consciousness got an administrator. There are angels in the astral world. And some people say they see angels and they look after them. But the angels are jealous of human beings. Even the administrator of that world, in old Grecian culture, old ancient culture, they would call these gods. Because they had so much power. The chief administrator got a lot of power, just like the chief administrator in this in America is the president, right? But he's not the ultimate power. The chief administrator is not the ultimate power, but he, he's there for a certain amount of time. In the astral world, that administrator, because of good karma that he or she has created, gets that position. Maybe in that position for 5,000 years and then reincarnates and come here or can meet somebody who can take him higher. But that position changes, just like in this world, the different administrators changes. I wanted to meet the chief administrator in that world. My teacher said, look, if I go there, he's going to want me to take him higher. 
So let's bypass that. <laughs> I, said, I said, this is a big world. He said, yes, this world is much larger than the astral plane. Like I said earlier, the astral plane would appear like the Pacific Ocean, the physical universe with all of its stars and galaxies and planets would appear like a quarter in the Pacific Ocean. The astral world will appear like a quarter in the Pacific Ocean in the causal plane, okay? The causal plane and the astral world would be like a small pebble in that world, even though it's huge. And the God who run that world is a counterfeit God, illusionary God, it's not real, but he got so much power that he controls the destiny of everybody in that world and below that world. Your karma is in his hands or her hand. And they determine how many births you'll take, how long you'll be in this world, what lessons you'll learn. You may be born mentally retarded or blind. You may be born Asian or black or Hispanic or Russian. And your birth determine how much you'll learn. You become a religious follower, most of us, based on our parents and society, right? And the, the ultimate creator created created create an illusion of himself. And that being got so much power that he thinks he or she is God because he knows everything about everybody. Not only does he know, he can become one with everything. Actually experience oneness. That's a powerful thing. I don't know how to use the words. How can you experience oneness? You experience oneness with your friends and with your relatives, but you don't actually feel you're in their body. You can That being can feel he's in the body of everything. You understand what I'm trying to say? I can't use the right words. Now, my teacher said, let's go beyond that. That being lives to be millions of years. He's at that level for millions of years. We also have an age of millions of years when we go there. But he said, let's go beyond this space. So we went into another world, which I don't know what to call it, but let's call it self-realization. Where you discover for the first time that you have a soul. <laughs> right now we talk about souls, but we actually are trapped in the physical body, in the astral body or the emotional body, and in the mental body. The mind is a trap. You got three traps, physical body, emotional, astral body, I'm using those interchangeably, and the causal body, which is the mental body. Physical body is a costume that you wear at a Halloween party. You know you inside the costume if you're in the astral body. If you've got astral awareness, you know that you're in a costume. Then when you go to the, the causal wear around, you know you're in another costume. You know it, but you can't get out. The only problem with knowing that you're in the physical costume, you got astral awareness, full astral awareness, but you know you can't get out until you die. You know how to get out and come back and go to work tomorrow if you had a free will and the ability to do that. But then you want to get out because when you get out, you're in a beautiful place, you live a long life, there's no pain, you got more knowledge, and you want to be in that heavenly world. You don't want to be in the ghetto somewhere. You want to be in Rodeo Drive in Hollywood. <laughs> if you got a lot of money, you like to live in Hollywood somewhere, right? So if you got, you go to that world, you say, I want to stay there, but you have to stay in this ghetto, but it won't be too bad because you know you can go there every night. You can leave and go if you got the willpower to go. That's how the, these bodies look. They're nothing but prison. All of these bodies, except for the causal body, look exactly like the physical body. The physical body got five fingers. Uh, it has uh, two eyes, nose, mouth, male, female. You're just in a different racial comp composition. The astral body got the same type of look. It looks just like the physical body. But when you're in the causal body, the causal body can take on different forms. It can take on whatever form. You can take on an animal form. So if you go into the astral plane and able to go there at will, 
you become very, very powerful. You can heal the physical body, okay, with your powers. But if you got a God who's above that, he said, he may say, don't do it. Because that problem, you're paying off what you've done to some other human being in a previous life. Therefore, you get the pain of that experience or the problems. You start seeing the beauty of having some kind of pain. It's hard for us to understand it at this level. But when you're in the astral plane, you won't be able to understand it without a guy. Because your first instinct would be, I want to live comfortable when I get back in the physical body. Let me heal myself. I don't need to go get medicine. It'll be cheaper for you to go buy you some medicine or see a doctor and go that route. Use the natural method. But if you want to heal yourself, you can. But if you're healing yourself at the cost of your spiritual progress, you take your attention and you go deeper inside the body where the powers exist. But those powers should be used to lift your soul to the next stage. Like a rocket can cross the gravitational pull of the earth. If it's got enough power, right? You can go in outer space if you got a rocket that's got enough fuel and power to take you beyond the gravitational pull of the earth. So your soul has enough power, if you use it right, can cross the gravitational pull of the astral region. So you should use that power and fuel not to heal yourself in the physical world when you can go to a doctor. <laughs> you know, it's cheaper. <laughs> Why use that power? Because that power is hard to get. When you get that power, People will use that power to do that. You can have that once you go deeper. You can go deeper inside your body and go to the causal plane where all of the power exists. But you get power when you go to the astral plane, if you go inside, deeper inside the astral world. But the mystics who have gone deep inside, they said, why use nuclear fuel to solve a physical problem? You can do it. Just like in a spoon. Do you know how much power is in a spoon? They dropped a nuclear bomb, an atomic bomb in, on Japan. And when they dropped it, it was just a little power that they released in the atoms and just killed 100,000 people. It destroyed most of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Two bombs. So there's enough power in your soul way beyond that. There's power even in material matter. If you know how to release it, you come up with nuclear power that can light up a whole city with electricity if you want to use it positively. Thank you for your for inviting me, Vivian, and I hope I've not bored any of your audience. I definitely know you are happy with this experience. And tell your audience if they wish to contact me, they can contact me directly on my email and I will write them back.